Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a review on Amazon's number one best-selling cold brew coffee maker. It's also their number three best-selling coffee maker, but during the summer, it's their number one best-selling coffee maker. Now I can't pronounce it, Tequila, and I've got the, um, the one quart cold brew coffee maker. It costs $25 off of Amazon. They also sell a two quart. So I'm new to cold brew coffee, and I set this up a couple days ago because you've got to put it in your refrigerator, and it has to be in there for about from 12 to 24 hours or even up to 36 hours. So it comes with, this was inside it, which is okay, and it does come with a user guide, and the user guide is pretty good, but it still leaves a little bit to be desired as far as how much water to use in that. So the first thing is you're probably going to need a grind coffee grinder because these cold brew coffee makers, they require a coarse grind coffee. So here we have a ground coffee for a drip coffee maker. That's at a medium grind. That will not work in this uh, coffee maker. You need it ground at a coarse grind. Now you can go to your local coffee shop and ask for a coarse ground coffee. They can give it to you. I buy my whole bean coffee and I also use, I like this OXO coffee maker or this coffee grinder. It does a pretty good job. I've got a, a different review on it. So on the grinder, normally it's at a medium grind. Fine is for espresso, but we need to be over here in the coarse area. Now I have done some tests. The cor the, all the way to the coarse, I didn't get as much flavor extraction. So I had to back out more towards the the uh, medium, so closer to the medium than the, the all the way to the course. So let's go ahead and grind some. Okay, so we've got our coffee. And you'll notice right away, it is definitely at a coarse grind. So you can see the coffee, it's got a general coarse um, grind to it. Now they don't recommend the, the French roast or the dark roast. They do recommend medium roast for this. Now that's not to say you can't use those dark roasts, but they do recommend a medium roast and that's what I've been using. So since I've got some made, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the drinks and then I'm going to show you uh, how to put it in there and use it. So first off, they consider this a concentrate. That's concentrated cold brew coffee. I was under the impression that you just, okay, you brewed it and then you poured this out into your cup and you drink it. So it didn't taste the best that way. So you can, you can serve this, you can make it hot or cold. Typically you're gonna, probably gonna make it cold. You're gonna add some milk and some water and probably some sweetener of some sort. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do, it, like I said, it's, this has been sitting in the ice box. I've been shaking it. It is leak proof. The coffee is kept inside a filter in there, but you're supposed to, this is leak proof. You're supposed to shake this uh, every once in a while. When you first put it in and then after it's been sitting in there a while, you're supposed to shake it. So let's take the coffee grounds out. And you do that by just twisting the top. This part's gonna stay. There's the coffee grounds. And we're just simply, I'm just going to put it here for a demonstration. Now, we're supposed to remove this. Okay. That's got screwed. See how there's the coffee and it's screwed in there. I'm supposed, now there, you're going to get some coffee grounds up here. That's okay. I'm supposed to rinse this so that I can reinstall it on that. Okay. I've got that all rinsed. It's got these nice openings so that it allows some of the cold brew to come out. And you simply just. Now when I want to get some, I'm just going to open this a little bit. See how I can see that opening and I can pour some out. So let's take a look at the coffee that I did brew. So yeah, there, there's still some in there. And cleanup is going to be a little tricky. Um, but that's a, like a really fine plastic uh, filter material. It's very, very fine. Okay, so I've got some milk here. We're gonna add some milk. I've got my tumbler. I'm gonna make an iced coffee. Now, typically, this is cold already. 
I'm used to brewing uh, hot coffee in here and you got to add a bunch of ice. Here you don't have to add as much ice. In fact, that might be a little bit too much. Okay, so let's pour ourselves some coffee. Okay, it pours pretty good. Again, this is considered a concentrate. So I don't want to add, I don't want to add the whole thing with the coffee. I mean, you can if you prefer the taste of that. I just don't prefer the taste of, of the concentrate out of there. Then I'm going to add um, about a half a cup of milk. And then I do find that I like just a little bit of water. Okay, and I'm going to be stirring all this up. Just a little, about a third cup of water. Oh, well, no, not quite that much. And then I like to add a little sauce. Now, you can, I can drink it like this. It's okay. But boy, when you add these sauces, these French vanilla, salted caramel, pumpkin spice, it really just excites these. So typically two tablespoons is enough. And they make some sugar-free. Um, no, this is the sugar-free. I'll go three since it's sugar-free. Then you're just going to stir all that up. Again, see how the ice doesn't melt a bunch? Because everything we've added to it's been cold. These are tumblers I bought off of Amazon. I'll put a link to them in the show description note. I really like them. They're pretty cheap, but they actually do a really good job. Now, that, that's delicious. Um, this took a lot of practice to get this. Not, not really a lot of practice, but just knowing that that's a concentrated and you're supposed to add a little bit of water. The milk really helps. Uh, the syrups actually really helped. That, um, that sugar-free is really good. So, that coffee is very smooth. Um, now, when I tasted it just from here, I still tasted sort of the bitterness, acidic. It may not have been as strong as like a normal cup of coffee, but it's what I found is it gets smoother easier, if that makes any sense. So when you add a little bit of milk, a little bit of sugar, the smoothness comes down and it's super quick. Where normal hot coffee, it seems like I have to add a little bit more sugar and, and um, creamer to get that smoothness, that non-bitter taste. With this, I don't have to add as much. Now that's a really, really good drink. I probably could have added a few more ice. The good thing is the ice isn't gonna dilute it right away. So I could have added a little bit more ice um, man, that's just a really good drink. Now I'll get into, let's get into preparations. I'm gonna, I'll do hot at the end. I'm not real familiar with how to make that a hot drink. So I'll talk about that at the end. So the directions, I, each one just kind of, um, each direction packet was a little different. So this one was a little different than this and online was even a little bit different than all, all than both of these. Um, because here it talks about you can serve it hot or cold. Iced coffee, simply pour it into a concentrate of water and milk over ice. So it really doesn't give you a, a bunch of, you got to kind of experiment with it a little bit. And see, what, what was confusing to me is, so look, you look at that and you're like, how's that a concentrate? Because to me, it looks like a light brew. I mean, that's a medium coffee, but it looks like a breakfast blend, like a, like a blonde roast. So at first, I was just considering this, oh, it's too weak but it actually is not as weak as it looks. Now, this was not, a, this, you know, this is not gonna taste like a dark French roast or anything. And now, since that's a concentrate, all I gotta do is tighten this down and I can store that in the refrigerator. Now, I don't see any, any coffee grounds floating around in there, nothing. And I can store that, like, and this is only the one quart. They do make a bigger one. I might get the bigger one. Um, this. This is really, really good coffee. So the handle's got like, I do like the handle. It's got like a, uh, a gripper on it. And then this whole thing, you, if you hold the bottle, this whole thing unscrews. That's when we're gonna set it up. Okay, so when I said you don't get any coffee grounds, but you do get a little bit of sediment. Um, now sediment, I found it does add a little flavor and it settles down towards the bottom. So I've poured out the concentrate and now towards the bottom, I've got some sediment. So again, down at the bottom, I can see some of that sediment. I mean, there's a, just a few minute coffee grounds in there. If you keep shaking it, 
you won't notice the sediment. So here's pretty much what you end up with at the end. Again, even though it does look bad in this, this picture, I didn't taste any coffee grounds or anything like that. Okay, so now let's talk about the construction. Cleanup was very simple. I just rinsed this out with water. You don't get that like oily coffee staining that you do when you brew coffee with hot water. This uh, cleanup seems to be so much more simpler. Now this is that part that screws on and off. It's got an O-ring built in. Now, this is kind of a, not really a cheap, well, I mean, it's not really a cheap plastic, but this isn't the most expensive cold brew they make. I mean, everything's, you know, it's $25, you know, this is plastic. It's, it's, it says it's pretty BPA free and that, you know, it seems pretty rugged. Uh, it seems well built for the price, if that makes any sense. But again, you just screw this on and then there's this and it just screws on. And then we've got, you put your coffee in here and then there's internal threads here and this is gonna screw on and it gets tight, okay? And then that's how our coffee's in here. And we put it in here in the water and we let it sit. And occasionally you stir it. And I like that it's spill proof. That way you can really give it a good shake. So, and what they want you to do is, is break away those coffee grounds in there and get, get the water flowing in there. Okay, so let's make some, let's make some, I call this a concentrate. Keep telling yourself it's a concentrate and it helps with, with the mixing and the taste. So let's add 14 to 16 tablespoons of your favorite medium roast coarsely ground coffee to the infuser. They call that the infuser. It seems like a lot of coffee for how much you get, and it is a lot of coffee. Okay, so here I've got the ground coffee. This is, again, it says 14 to 16. This is 16 tablespoons of that coarse ground coffee. Now, that's almost one cup. You can see it's just a little bit less, so this is a good measuring device. So getting in here can be a little tricky. Again, I'm just gonna pour the coffee right in the top of here. Nope. Okay, so I just made a quick paper funnel. They probably make something for this, but I don't have it. There it goes. Now, no mess. So we can see that's that's the maximum amount. You can see it, it comes up to the almost to the top of the filter material, but not quite. We don't compact it, we just let it sit there. Make sure there's no coffee grounds on the outside. So you're gonna take the lid, you're gonna screw the lid onto it, and that seals it. The only way, well. Yeah, it looks like you can get it kind of crossed through it. Make sure it's nice and even. I had it kind of crooked there. So now the water's gonna go in the filter, mix with it, and come back out of the filter. It's not going anywhere else. It can't come anywhere else. So it says, add 32 ounces of cold filtered water to the pitcher. Fill three-fourths full, then lower the infuser into the water. Seal lid airtight, shake well and store in refrigerator overnight or up to 36 hours to cold brew. Occasionally twist open and swirl infuser. So 32 ounces is four cups of water. So four cups of water, or that's what that's what it's going to brew. When you use 14 uh, tablespoons of, of coffee grounds, that's a lot of coffee grounds for the amount that you're going to get. So normally, that's almost twice as much. For like when you brew a 12 uh, cup pot of coffee, you use about 12 tablespoons, but you get almost eight cups of coffee out of it. Even though it says 12 cups, that's not equivalent to a measuring cup. Um, so you're using about twice as much coffee grounds to get the same amount of liquid, but it is a concentrated. So keep that in mind. So you are gonna be adding something to it. So maybe by the time you're done, it does add up to almost the same. I still think you probably use a little bit more coffee grounds. So again, you don't fill this pitcher all the way up. And then I'm just gonna put it in there. It wants to float, so just tighten it down. Everything's nice and tight. And now I give it some shaking. 
know, it doesn't say how much. Occasionally, so it says, lower the seal, shake well. Okay, so it does say shake well. You know, how much is well, I don't know. But I do like the fact that you can turn it over and, and you know, shake it a different way. Doesn't say how long or how much. Okay, now we let it sit. We put it in the refrigerator, 24 to 36 hours. I tried it after 12 hours. It was just okay. Um, I think it did taste a little bit better after 24, but the 36 hour mark does seem to be a pretty good mark. And again, the, the instructions on this are refrigerate 12 to 24 hours, whereas it says 36 hours on this. So just a little difference. And so when, you're, when you open the refrigerator, like at night, getting a snack, just give it a good shake. You know, it'll sit there and it'll kind of get cleared up. And it looks like a really light brew. You're, you're kind of worried because you're like, oh, it looks like a, doesn't look like a strong coffee. We associate color of the coffee with a strong, you know, taste and all that. That's not necessarily the case I found with this. Okay, so I saved some of that early brew. This is out of that, uh, that, this is that concentrate from earlier. Let's do a hot coffee now. Okay, so now it says to do a hot coffee. It says heat, heat the concentrate and mix one part coffee concentrate with two parts boiling water. So I'm not sure what the best way to heat that up is. Microwave maybe. Here it says mix one part coffee concentrate with two parts boiling water. And then you can add creamer or sugar. Okay, so I've, getting two part, one part coffee and two parts hot water can be a little tricky, but I'm just gonna try to... Now that looks like a pretty weak coffee. So yeah, even for a medium roast, that seems pretty, pretty light. So, I, you know, it's not bad. So, okay, so... Is it a is it a is it a coffee maker coffee? No. Does it taste good? Well, yeah, it does actually. Um, and I think this is where the less acidic, smoother taste. It definitely shines right here. Uh, again, the 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 hot coffee. This is my first time making the hot coffee. Uh, I was expecting it does taste like a light roast, okay, um, but it does not have that acidic, smooth acidic uh, bitter taste to it. I can drink that straight. I normally cannot drink uh, black coffee straight. It's way too bitter, it's way too acidic for me. I have to add creamer and sugar. I actually can drink that right now. Now, is it a great taste? No, I might add a little sugar, or a little creamer to it or something, um, but it definitely takes away that bitterness. Okay, so I added a little bit of French vanilla. Perfect, perfect coffee. Um, it does seem light. I don't know how much caffeine is going to be in there. And it's a little cooler than I would like, just because I don't have a good way of heating up the concentrate. So this concentrate, I guess I could have heated some up in the microwave first and then uh, poured in my boiling water. My water wasn't quite, it was a little cooled off. It was pretty hot, but it wasn't boiling yet. So using an electric kettle might help. I wouldn't put the concentrate in the electric kettle, but I would boil the water or boil water on the stove and then pour it right in there. That, that might help heat it up. But boy, adding just a little bit of um, sugar-free syrup really helped that taste. So to be honest with everybody, I was not expecting this to be this good. Um, I've, had over, I've brewed coffee over ice with a Keurig, and that tastes okay, but I end up having to add a lot of sugar and milk to it to kind of get the, the taste I want. But... Wow, I was pleasantly surprised with this. Now, is it a dark, robust coffee like an espresso or a French rose? No, it's nothing like that. This is a completely, entirely different drink in my opinion. But it is the coffee taste. And just keep in mind that that's a concentrate. You're going to have to dilute it. Um, you might be able to drink it straight like that. To me, it didn't taste good. It tasted better when I did the drinks. So I, I'm just very impressed with this. There's, There seems to be a lot of... Um, people making cold brew coffee now and again i was just not expecting much i, I don't know why uh, maybe just because i've tried different things in the past and it's hard to get away from a standard brew coffee maker and the percolate you know the, the drip coffee maker heating up the water and all that um, this seems too easy almost uh, 
I'm definitely going to buy the bigger one because I want some more. Now, I haven't tried it, but it says it can, you can store that concentrate up to two weeks in the refrigerator. Now, you always want to remove the filter, like I showed you. Remove the coffee and the filter out, and then you just store the concentrate by itself for two weeks. So I'm definitely going to experiment more with this. I'm going to have my wife try it. Uh, recently, they, she can't find the V8 energy drinks anymore, so she's having to try to find an early morning drink. She doesn't necessarily like coffee, but I think she's going to enjoy this maybe because she needs just a little bit of caffeine in the morning, not a bunch, and we can't find the V8 uh, energy drinks anywhere anymore. Again, I'll put a link to all of these, uh, this mug, that tumbler, and the actual coffee maker, and I'll put a link to the grinder. Uh, that's kind of that's a hundred dollar grinder. They do sell, you know, twenty thirty dollar grinders. I just found you, you need to pay a little bit more for a grinder just because of the the cup and the grind. And I just found that one really works well. I am an Amazon affiliate. If you click on the links, I get a little bit of money from the clicks that you make, but the products don't cost you anymore. Um, I buy all my own products with my own money, so it's a way of supporting my channel. And I just really appreciate everybody's support. Thanks everybody for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe.